So just as is the case with a lot of people, I admittedly do not always think. I, I do too stupid fucking shit, okay? Is this the stupidest thing I ever did? Of course not. Of course not, but I'm going to tell you. Um, the other day, in my room, it's a shithole. It's all a mess. Although the box for your mattress, as I told you, is at least gone. That's a start, right? We got, my mom got someone from church to take the damn mat box for your mattress to the dump for us, okay? So that's gone. That makes it easier to clean. Remember, my room's not ventilated. I never open the windows. When I was sleeping in there, I had the sheets, black sheets over, and one sheet and then another black sheet to try to block out the light. You know? I like to sleep in pitch dark and with earplugs. I'm just totally, you know. Anyway. Broke a fluorescent light bulb all over the rug. Of course didn't clean it up and even worse the broken bulb part that was super sharp I stuck I just wasn't thinking I forgot about fluorescent light bulbs being potentially dangerous I forgot about all of it I, I stuck the broken light bulb into my box where I'm putting things and I think to myself well I'm not gonna reach in that box but just now, an hour ago, I did reach into the box, forgot all about the broken light bulb piece that was razor sharp. Sharp as a knife, probably sharper than some of our knives. We have dull knives, okay? Razor, razor sharp. And uh, I punctured my finger with it, bleeding all over the place, okay? Bleeding all over my hand. Um, only a tiny little hole, but... It, it stopped bleeding, and then it just started bleeding again. And, and I had to look online because I got afraid if I puncture myself with mercury light bulb, like, what happens? But people say, you don't have to be afraid, but I still didn't like it. My whole hand started aching, and then my brain started, you know, anxiety, panic attack, and I started thinking all kinds of crap. Um, but why did I do so, such a stupid thing? There was some reason... I mean, why didn't I throw away the broken piece of light bulb instead of sticking it in that box? Probably because I was doing other shit and didn't want to get up and throw it in the garbage, I imagine. You're not even, then I find out you're not even supposed to throw it in the garbage. You're not supposed to, it's not, you're not supposed to do it. You, I don't even know how you dispose of these fucking light bulbs. I don't particularly care for them. But anyhow, that's what happened. Then I had to give my mom, a, I screamed, and my mom was like, what wrong? I'm like, nothing, 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 you know, because when you're in pain, you don't want to be bothered. You know, but then she's like, you're going to give me my drops? I'm like, Mom, I just stabbed myself with a light, this fluorescent light bulb. Um, I'm looking online to make sure that, you know, it's not potentially dangerous or whatnot. That this, you know, when, could, I don't know. I'm imagining, like, mercury going flooding through my bloodstream through that puncture wound, you know. Even though it was a small puncture wound, it bled. Bled a lot, you know. But why I would have done that and not thrown it away, Lord only knows. What was I thinking? I wasn't, obviously. What was I thinking when I stick a broken fucking light bulb razor sharp into a box? And then why was I reaching into the box? Because I had some papers had fallen in there. I was reaching for them. Anything could happen. I don't... The way I'm living is not good. I'm lucky this is all that's happened to me because I could be seriously hurt, okay? Because it's just not safe the way I'm living, the way that room is, because you don't know what you can hurt yourself on or whatnot, okay? So there's stupid thing number one that I did. Stupid thing number two is, is that I just realized that I did. I should have never waited all this time to open up this mattress. So I'm going to open it up in front of you. Um, not that it would matter, because they wouldn't view that as proof, I'm sure. But... I would at least know I was telling the truth. What if there's something wrong with the mattress? I waited all these months to open it. And what if there's something wrong with it? How can I prove that it wasn't me that did it? You know, sometimes things arrive defective, but you were supposed to, I was supposed to open this a long time ago, and if there was something wrong, I would have let them know immediately, see? So that's really stupid of me to do. I wasn't even thinking. I haven't been thinking, I told you. I've been going through a lot of shit, and I just haven't been thinking. I've been trying to do too much. You know? And I feel like 
the summer has been the summer of my mom's cataract surgery because it's a whole month nearly of giving her drops and the whole month again, you know what I mean? So that's that. And then I have to give Omar his drives. And when I, I can't really leave or go do anything when I'm giving her her, her drops four times a day. Mm. When I went that first day, she arranged for a friend to give her her drops just that one time once out of the four times that day, but then I wound up, I just, as I said, not going the whole, not being gone the whole day, but still, she'd already had her drops earlier, and, and I had to go the next day, and then there was no one to give her a drop, she just missed it that one day, but I don't think that matters that much, but anyway, I'm going to open this up in front of you, I'm like, this is ridiculous, I'm getting down to the wire, I have to either return it, or see if they'll, if they'll Take it. I bet you anything, though. That it's a, it, remember, I had hoped that I could just return it in this original box, and I couldn't. They would they would charge me to do that. I'm like, I don't want to be charged. You know, you'd think they would want it back brand new, but they don't. It's all so. I don't know if they already they offered me that. It's probably a one-time offer. And I didn't take it on the spot because I hadn't even opened the thing. And I don't even know if anybody likes it, you know. But I either have to return the damn thing or see if they'll still want to offer that get half back. I never expected that. Not in a million years. That's apparently what they do. But you, if it got around that that's what they do, probably it wouldn't go. Most people aren't going to do that, you know. I would never have expected that, that they'd offer that. But if it did get around, I mean, but there's all kinds of deceptive things in this life. Like you could tell your friend if they want to, well, by the way, if you pretend you don't like it, i.e. if you lie, you know, you'll, they'll offer you half off of it if you decide not to keep it. But I didn't do that. I was planning on returning it and never thought in a million years they'd say we can offer you half your money back. What do you mean you can offer me half? Are you serious? But I also think it's ridiculous that if it's they should make exceptions if if it was unopened and you can resell it because nobody's touched it, why not just come don't make me repack it. I asked can we send the original box? They said no. They make you go through hell to send it back. Apparently, gets all up or something. It's like compact in there, supposedly. I don't know. Like I said, not the smartest thing of me to never even have opened the thing. If the thing is decent, I'm going to see if they'll still offer me the half off. But it's probably a one-time thing. And now that we've initiated the return, they won't go back on that. They're probably just stickler for rules. Because it really is irrational. And I said as much. I said, it's irrational that you wouldn't want to just let me come get it and for free. Unopened. You can resell the thing. You can't resell it for, you know, when you get it all open and everything. You have to, but it doesn't matter. Their whole thing is they have to follow the rules. And the rules are, you have to, the only way you get it shipped back for free and ship to you for free is if you try it for 120 days. And meanwhile, I'm gonna not even gonna try it at all. But I'm at least gonna. Okay, I don't even know how to get it out. It doesn't come out. That's why they say you can't use the same box because they know it doesn't easily come out. And you probably have to rip the fucking box. I gave him a sob story. I said, you know, I do this and that, and then I'm not going to stay where I'm at, and all this crap, and... Oh, my God. I 
use this box anyway, so I may as well rip it, right? This thing's super fucking heavy, by the way. Mega heavy. Luckily, the day it was delivered was the same day we had somebody come to do our lawn for the first time. And he was just, thankfully, super nice. And he got it up the stairs and inside for me, and then I dragged it into my mom's room because there was no one else where else to put it. Oh, I can get it out of the trash. Maybe. I just wanted to open it up in front of you so you can see that I'm telling the truth that if it was defective, it had been defective all along and I wouldn't be lying even though they wouldn't give a shit because they're not going to believe me. <laughs> if you started using your mattress four months ago like you're supposed to, Laura, you would have known if it was defective. And then, of course, I don't put my money back and, you know, I'm stuck with the thing and whatever. <laughs> But obviously, if my mom just say no, I already, if she decides to buy it off of me, I will, I, it will stay here in her home. She needs something for the spare bedroom if I leave. You know? I told you, if nothing else, it's getting, I'm going to be 51 years old. It's getting just too much for me to even, I mean, I can do it, but, but it's, it's getting harder and harder to, to walk that mile, especially in inclement weather, especially in, in New England winters, you know, to walk a mile to the nearest bus stop. This is not conducive where I live for somebody who doesn't have a car, period. You know, it just isn't. It just isn't. It's not conducive for you. It's just... Pug dog. I was telling someone about, you know, Different people are going to have different opinions. There's someone that I was telling was like, thinks that too many, and it wasn't Joe, of course, because Joe, you know, has strong opinions about a lot of things. But this person thinks that this is a generation that's too caught up, like they have to comment on every little thing. I agree, but, you know, we also live and we have, we have a right to think about things, and it's just not smart if you're, if you're, child murders a whole bunch of people yes it's your beloved kid and if you love the kid and you remember when the kid was little whatever you should concentrate that inside the funeral home with family and friends and not subject the, not put a public obituary out calling saying your kid had a kind smile and all of that as me and other people are going to sarcastically say oh yeah a real kind smile while he was busy blowing away people for no reason at all smiling at you kindly while he's busy about to shoot your dad including his own sister I mean no not smart to do I don't have to agree with 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 everyone and this person I talked to like thinks well I'm just grateful that it didn't I'm not you know I'm not the one who was killed or not the one who has to deal with because you do feel bad if you have a heart or brain you have to feel bad for the parents, if they love their kid and their kid turns out to be a mass shooter and, and kills a whole bunch of innocent people. I saw a fictional movie about that. It was a fantastic movie. I can't remember what it was called. It was fictional. But it was fantastic because it addresses the fact that that people who kill, like, like I mean, it's horrific. Horrific what Chris Watts, Christopher Watts did to his entire family. 
annihilated his wife and two baby girls. And it, but he still has a family who loves him, parents who love him, you know. So you have to remember that, that, and I do, that these people still love their children. A lot of times they still have parents who adore them, these killers. I mean, you know, but you also have to be sensitive to the fact. So, no, I don't think it's smart to publish a, to put out there a, a for all the, everyone to see, a, you know, publicly seen obituary that's glowing, that mentions nothing about the nine innocent lives taken and all the people shot and mentioned, you know, I don't think that was a smart thing for these parents to do. And, but what someone I talked to said, they probably just weren't thinking at all. They're in grieving because they lost both their children. I don't know if they had any more children. And they lost them both in one night. Even, you know. But you still can't gloss over the fact that your son was a killer. You know. You can love him and talk about what good things you saw in him and how he was when he was a kid. He certainly wasn't always a killer mentality. Who knows what turned him into that? We're just never going to know. We're never going to know. Um, but you have to also... Be sensitive to the fact of the people whose lives, their family and friends, they are, that's what your child did to their child. They're, they're, you know, so you have to be aware of that. Okay. Okay. agree with somebody like who I was talking to not a close close friend but he, I get you know where he's coming from he's like he's like I I don't I think you know we shouldn't judge we, you know you don't know you aren't in be grateful you're not in those parents shoes where they have they have to deal with burying their their son who killed nine innocent people you know including their own daughter his own sister so it's hard I don't know how they do it I really don't I don't know how they do it, but pretending is not the answer. And people were pissed because they write this glowing obituary and mention nothing about the victims, about the lives, the innocent lives he took. You know, this wasn't some, not that that's excusable either, but it's more excusable sometimes a crime of passion where, I don't know, a husband or a wife finds their beloved, um, you know, mate, spouse, cheating on them with another person and then in a fit of rage they kill them you know that's more excusable it's still murder but it's more excusable than just deciding to gun innocent people down or out for the night I mean you get it so I you gotta pity the parents too because they have to deal with that who their son is but I still don't think the answer is to just pretend it didn't happen and not even address the fact of what he did. No mention of the people he killed, you know? No mention of the fact that he died by... It's just awful. That's why that person I was talking to was saying, you know, in that instance, these, all these instances, he just considers himself fortunate that he isn't in that position, that he's not a parent dealing with a beloved kid who decided to commit mass murder, you know? And he's not one of the victims of that mass murder so i get it but you also i don't think you can live like that we have otherwise why live at all if we can't comment on the things that happen around us and you know judge not lest ye be judged you know that's everybody judges everything and there's a lot of things that should be judged a lot of fucking things 
I'm sorry, but there's a lot of fucking things in this life that should be judged. For example, e-cigarettes. I think those are the biggest scam going. I heard that they don't even, it's not monitored by the, they don't even know what chemicals are in there. It was, it was touted as, oh, it's much safer alternative to cigarettes. But how do you really know that? How do you really know that? How do you know what's being put in there? Because now suddenly a whole bunch of kids are coming up with severe lung damage and, and they went into some believers from e-cigarettes that are supposedly harmless and were touted as being, you know, much more harmless than cigarettes. But I have also heard that there are chemicals put in those e-cigarettes along with, and they don't even know what it is. So dangerous as hell, okay? So judge not, yes, yeah, there's lots of things we can judge in this life. And so I don't exactly agree with this person. And it doesn't mean I don't like him in other you know, ways or whatever. I get where he's coming from to a point, though. But you cannot apply that to everything. You've got to judge. There's just too much fucking bad shit that goes on. Too much shit where you're just like, you know. I mean, e-cigarettes come out and they're touted as, oh, much safer alternatives. And now look, all these years later, all these years later, all, and they, they really think it's it's because of the e-cigarettes. That's what they have in common, that these kids are developing severe lung disease and whatnot, and they all smoked e-cigarettes, so. Not good, you know. I'm not under, is e, are e-cigarettes not regulated by the, or I don't know. It's, I think it's just one of the biggest scams going. I do. I do. They're, you know, cigarette is, so many people, they're trying to stop from smoking. They have all this ass and cigarette smoke goes, smoking goes way down. So how do we address that? Oh, we create e-cigarettes and tell them it's much safer alternative and, and even put them in pretty packages so kids will want to try them and even then we'll deny it. And we never meant for them to be for kids. Sure, you didn't. Yeah. Try to sell me some land on the moon, you know. Land in Timbuktu because I'm not buying it. Everybody lies. Ugh. Everybody lies. <laughs> I'm open in this thing. Mom, I'm trying to get the map out so just stay in there and do your thing okay whatever you want to do watch TV or do whatever you want to do out there just sit there I'm in here with your room and I'm I don't want you to come in I'm I'm dealing with this mattress okay it's not easy <laughs> I've reached out from the bed and like pulled it.
slowly coming up, see? <laughs> it's not easy at all. I'm going to run out of room in my mom's room, too. On top of everything else. sharp things on here. It's all I need to hurt myself. I already hurt myself. I hurt myself again on the same day, you know. Ugh. I've officially run out of steam. I don't know if I can even get it out. It's such a high Kidding. I'm not I'm cooking and cleaning all day. I made, I'd already made hamburger the other day and stuck it in the freezer for, until I was going to make this. It's beef bone broth, two packages of organic sauteed mushroom sauteed and coconut oil, package of spinach kale um, mix sauteed and coconut oil. There was less than a package because when I bought it, it was going to expire soon and then I forgot to make it. I shouldn't get it when things got inspired a couple of days after I go grocery shopping, but it was all they had, and then some of it got, well, I used some of the top, but on the bottom it was like kind of, it was all wilted, but when it starts getting like wet or something, I just didn't, I just threw it away. And two summer squash, and organic, and a can of organic pumpkin. Good. Definitely healthy. Oh, and then I try mung beans. I've had mung bean noodles, I believe. I'm trying mung beans and sell sprout of mung beans. I bought it for Vitacos Organic Sprout of Mung Beans. The product of the USA. You know, I only recently found out about the Dark Act. If you don't know what that is, it's with the, the, the government that loves us so much as 